In today's video, I'm explaining the very basics of networking and C++ using ASIO. So as you can see here, we have this net server that's running as an application. And right now it just says server started. But if I run my net client, it will connect to the server on my local port, which you could change this IP address to an actual public IP address and run the server on that and it will work fine. But for this demonstration, it's just on my local IP. And then I can type one to ping the server with my client. And right now it's taking 0 0.0006 seconds for a message to travel from the client to the server. And if your client and server were not on the same computer, like this demonstration is, this time would obviously be much larger. But then I can also connect more clients. So let's connect a second client and we can ping this one too. And you'll see the ping messages only appear for which client actually does it. And the server keeps a track of, of everything that's happened. And it'll keep track of the ID of each one. So the original ping was on this server 10,000. And then client 10,001 sent all of these. And if I go here, we can see it sends back on the original one. And something else we can do is I can type 2. And it'll say enter a message to type. So I could say, I don't know, hello world and we'll see it sends a message to this client and we could respond i don't know e4 and we can see that the message appears here before i show the code i just want to explain a few things that'll be important the first one is the difference between udp and tcp so udp sends unreliable but fast messages while tcp sends slower reliable messages so what this means is that when you have a UDP program, when it sends a message, it sends it from the client or the server, and it just sends it to the other one, and then that's all it does. So whatever, the server tells the client that this character is standing right here or whatever at 10, 25, 40, I don't know, some position, right? It would update the position and send this as a packet over to the client. But uh, TCP, what it does is it will have the server, it'll send it to the client, let's say the same data, right? But then it will actually, it gets a response back, like it waits for a confirmation that like this got the message. And the reason it does this is that messages can be lost. So the client might actually not get this message. There's no way to know unless you send the confirmation back. So that is why TCP is reliable because you can guarantee that you know whether the client got the message or not, whereas UDP doesn't really know, but it's faster. So this one's generally used for more like real time games where speed is very important. So if you're in a like multiplayer real time shooter or something, it doesn't really matter if you get the exact position of the guy right every frame and you'd much rather just have it be like you'd rather have it be the exact position a thousand times out of a thousand and one time but one time it just bases it on their like two previous locations versus getting it right all the time but being like half a second delayed or i don't know exactly what the delay rate is for this is probably a little smaller but you get it's probably like double the ping so those are the main differences. However, both have some methods to help offset their weaknesses. So UDP has a, it can send reliable messages, which is similar to what this, okay, that's terrible, whatever. It can do this. It's just not the base version and it's not as good as it. So it can send a message and then wait for it to come back. So it can kind of do this, but then you, uh, TCP has something called async which is it's not unreliable like I, it still waits for confirmation however it doesn't freeze the whole program so it sort of just sends the message and it can process at that speed however it still gets the updates so the client will be updated at full speed but the server will sort of will keep waiting and make sure it's actually getting messages from the client so those here i can add those in so this is a reliable messages you can send reliable messages or you can send async messages 
All right, now it's time to show it off in the code. So in the project, you can see we have a solution and three projects under it. So we have a server, which was that right side of the drawing, a client, which is the left side, and then common holds all the implementations for this. So we can start with the server, which is a, a CPP file, and you overwrite this server interface that I made. And you would provide a message type, which is an enum class, and you can decide what messages you want to send. And then you have three functions here, on client connect, on client disconnect, and on message. So in this case, when on client connect, which is when a client connects to the server, we create a message, we set the ID equal to server accept, and we send it to the user. Very simple. On client disconnect, we don't do anything, we just print removed client. And then on message, so that means a message is sent to the server by a client. We have this switch space for what type of message. So if it's a ping, we print that the server is pinged and we simply send it back to the user. If it's a message all, we'll say we got a message all and then we'll set the message type equal to server message. We'll add, so it's almost like a stack, we'll add to client get ID and then since this message already contains what they sent, we simply add who sent it and we message all clients besides the one that sent it, that message. In our main loop, we create a server on the port 8021. We start the server and then well true, we just run update server, which is a function set up in net server. So now this is all inside net common. So you'd have to include this in your project if you wanted to use it or build something very similar to this. So in here, this is what the class we're actually overriding does. So we have a start and a stop, and the start sets up an as you acceptor with a context and a port to what your current port is. So wherever you run the server, it'll get its own port and then use that. And the port is that 8021, and then this gets the address. So we have this start, which will we'll try to wait for a client. And then if it does, we'll run the ASIO context on another thread. Otherwise we'll accept, and then it'll say server started. Then the stop is very similar. It stops and then it joins the thread back. So this is all in async now, so that the messages can happen at different speeds and they're a little quicker, but it's still reliable since we're using TCP. So in our wait for client connect, we set up an async which is this Lambda function here that takes in an error code and a socket. So if we don't error, we say we have a new connection and we get the end, we get the socket and we get the remote endpoint. And then we create a new connection, which is that connection class. So those were the boxes in the center. And then we set the connection as server with an ASIO context up here and this right here. Uh, we move the socket and then we set up a queue of message in and if the client connects and we get this like a connects to the connection we will push back the new connection we'll add one to the id counter and add that to the connection and then print connection approved and then otherwise we'll say connection denied and this on client connect function it's one of the other functions you can override. So it's over here and that's that function we showed off here. So if you, if you make this function return false at any point, it will reject a client from joining the server. So maybe you have a password system and you ask for a password and if they get the password wrong, it will return false and not let them in. But in this case, we are just using this to print a message and we always return through. So we basically let everyone in, which is not the most secure way, although it is very simple for this demonstration. And then if all of that works, we can have our, we have our two message functions. We have message client, which basically says if the client is still there, like we're still connected, or if the client is a client, it's not null pointer, and we're still connected, then we send them a message. Otherwise, we do not, we error and we reset it and we erase the connection. And message all clients, does the exact same thing, just in a for loop. And it has this Boolean so that it only checks if invalid clients exist once. And finally, update. Update basically just 
messages things from the queue. So we add stuff to the queue asynchronously, and then this will update it every time it runs. And then that is that. So let's show off the connection. So the connection has an enum class called owner, so it can either be a server or a client connection. When we create one, we set the owner type equal to what is declared for it. Then we try to connect to a server, so we check if the socket's open, and if it is, we set our ID equal to the ID we passed in here, and we try to read a header. And then connect to server, if the type is client, so this is how we connect to a client from a server. We can try to connect to the server using a client, it's very simpler. We set up an ASIO connect as asynchronous. We have a socket, an endpoint that we pass in, and then we do the same thing where we read header. We have our disconnect, which just closes the socket, a connect, which checks if it's open, and then our send, which is what pretty much all of these were calling. We set an ASIO post, so we post the context, and then we have a as a lambda, so this and the message, and we basically check is the writing, is the message out queue empty? And if it is, we'll call write header function. Otherwise, or in either case, we push back. And then this, if this is false, we write the header. So then in our private, we have, so these four functions deal with sending messages. So we force each message to be of a enum class that you specify and to have a header which contains the size of the message and the ID, so what type from that enum class you picked, and the body with all the information. So in our read header, this is the first function that gets called from the connections. And what this will do is it has a socket, a buffer, which is size of message header, and a temporary message in. And what we do is we say, if we don't error, if that is greater than eight, which is eight's the size of the message header. So if this is true, we'll resize the body to be equal to how much data we actually need. And then we call read body. Else we just, if there is a message, but it's just a header, we just add it to incoming message queue and we stop doing this. Then in read body, we do the exact same thing. As long as there's not an error, we add it to the incoming message queue. So what this does is we'll take a message, add it to the queue, and if there's data assessed, attached to it, it will add that to the queue as well. And then write header does something very similar, except this time we're using a reference to the queue of messages out and the front of it. And if that's greater than zero, we'll write to the body. Otherwise, if it's empty, we'll just write a header and pop to the front. I'd like repeat this function and write body does the same thing where it'll pop front and recall write header. So all of these kind of keep themselves in a loop as like this calls write header again, this calls write header again, up here, add to incoming message queue, that will call read header again. And this one also just pushes owned messages based on whether it's type server or type client. So if it's a server, we push with where we where the message came from. If it's client, we don't because the client will only have one connection, which is the server, so it doesn't need this info. And then down here are all the variables for the class. And we do use a thread safe queue and message, which are created here. All right, and then this is our net message class, which is what we were sending. And you can see here, this is the header with the ID and size. And this is the message with the header and a body, which is a vector of bytes. And you can see how pretty much everything has been a template. So like these are both templates. The connections are all templates. The server is a template. So everything templates based off of this enum class that you provide. So this means that all the backend code can stay the same. However, you can change what types of messages are being sent. So without those out of the way, we can explain the client, which is very similar to the server as it handles a connection. But this time we have a queue of messages in. We can try to connect where we get a resolver and we create an endpoint from a host and the port. So this means you could pass in 
a URL to a website and be able to grab the address, the IP address of that website using this function. Then we try to m make a unique pointer to as a client to the context with our socket and then with our queue of messages in. If that works, we connect to the server using the endpoint and then we start a second thread. Otherwise we'll error and then disconnect, simply disconnects us, stops the context, joins back up the other thread and resets it. Then set is pretty simple. It's just if connected, send, and it calls that function in connection. And then is connection simply returns, do we still have a valid pointer? Are we connected? If so, return true, otherwise return false. And then we can return incoming, which gives the user the thread safe queue. And we can see how this is implemented on the client side, which is a lot more code as it handles messages. So we have our custom client, which is an override of that interface. We have a function ping server, which will create a message, set the type to ping, grab the current time, and then add that like add that time to the queue and then send the message. And message all does the same thing. It creates a message as type message all. And then this part of the code is not great. And there's something down here which is not great either. This is just for demonstration. So like this is a count and then a sin.get line. So this actually freezes the client while you're getting input, which is not a big deal. But if two people sent messages at the same time, you would only see the other person's once you're done typing yours. But this creates an input of 128 chars, adds that to the message and sends it. Then down here, we create a custom client. We connect to it using our local port and or local address, I mean, and our port. But you could change this to an actual server address if you had your server running on, a, on another machine. Then we basically have these key detection, which uses a Windows function. Not great, but this is so that we can just ping without having to like freeze the program every time. But basically, if we push zero, we ping the server. If we push one, we'll call message all. If we push two, we quit. And then, well, we are connected and the incoming messages are empty. We create a message, which is the front, or if it's not empty, we create a message which is the front, then we switch through what kind of messages we have. So, well, we're running and we're connected to the server and we have messages on our queue. We check if, it, if it's a server accept, we simply print accepted by the server. If it's a server ping, we get the time now and the time then from the message by extracting it. And then we print the difference. And the last one is server message. We simply create a char, 128 chars, set an ID, extract the ID, extract the message text, and then print them all. And at the end, if something, or if something failed here, like we call quit, then it'll say server down. So that's how the code works. It's very basic. There's a lot of issues with it. Like there's no security, anyone can join on, but this is just a very basic demonstration of how to do it. And in the description, I'll put a link to the video that I followed to set all this up if you want to follow the same tutorial. And if you want to see how to create an EXE project, like the ones I did in this video, but more complexly with an icon, textures, and fonts, you should check out this video here. And until next time, see ya.